Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. He already has a record of child abuse today. He received the maximum sentence for his latest crime, sexually assaulting a little girl for years. We first told you about Santos Vigil last fall after he asked a judge for visitation with his son, despite a long history of hurting children. As our Dylan Collier explains in this Defenders update, Vigil's visitation request, now the least of his concerns. Down over there? And you're trying to get visitation. Out of my face. Santos V Hill left court in late October calling the case at 12 defenders clowns. He left court this morning in handcuffs. V Hill took his chances pleading no contest to aggravated sexual assault of a child, a case built on accusations that he engaged in a sexual relationship with his wife's daughter beginning when she was just nine years old, leaving it in the hands of Judge Jefferson Moore to decide a punishment ranging from 25 years in prison to probation. With extra security brought in, V. Hill's mother testified in court that her son had moved on from a criminal history in Michigan that included multiple child abuse allegations and eventually one conviction for the crime and had traded a life of violence for that of a hardworking dad. He always comes home with pictures and they look happy together. Judge Moore was not swayed. Citing court records in which V. Hill actually said that the child had pursued a sexual relationship with him, Moore handed down the maximum sentence allowed. I sent you to 25 years in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. Emotionally wrecked spectators at the hearing listened as the victim and her mother described how much damage V. Hill had done. Santos, there are no words for the type of that you are. If and when V. Hill is released from prison, he'll then have to register as a sex offender for the rest of his life. Outside the Bear County Justice Center, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. A Bear County deputy who was sidelined from her patrol duties following her involvement in a police chase Monday now facing even more serious allegations. According to BCSO, Deputy Abigail Rios is under investigation by the agency's Internal Affairs and Public Integrity Units after she was caught on camera allegedly hitting a handcuffed teenager in the face. Rios was off duty when the incident happened in her neighborhood earlier this month. The defenders obtained home security video, which also appears to show a second off-duty deputy grabbing that teen and slamming his head against a patrol vehicle. Tim Gerber breaks down the investigation tonight on the Night Beat. And since shortly before noon, a jury has been deliberating the case of the accused medical center rapist. And now Anton Harris has been found guilty on both counts of aggravated sexual assault and aggravated robbery. Harris has been indicted in five rape cases in the medical center area from early 2016 through 2017. He was on trial for one of them. Paul Venema in court as attorneys made closing arguments. This trial has laid out what was Jane's worst nightmare come true. Harris is talking about the May 28, 2017 rape and robbery of a nurse in her medical center apartment. Due to the nature of the case, she's identified only as Jane, not her real name. Harris showed the jury police body cam video recorded that night. With a gun pointed at her head, prosecutor said, her attacker screamed, Shut up or I'll kill you. Shut up or I'll kill you. He said over and over. Attorneys for 21-year-old Anton Harris argued that the state did not produce a single witness who could identify their client as the rapist. People jumped to this conclusion because it's a young black kid and he lived in that neighborhood and he was walking around in a hoodie. Must have been him. None of these sergeants, none of these detectives, none of these reporting officers could ever tell you it was him. And unfortunately, the state's key witness, Jane, she couldn't tell you it was him. Prosecutors conceded that the victim could not positively identify her attacker. That's not necessary, they told the jury. Clinical technology took care of that. You can rely on the DNA in this case that Anton Harris was in fact the individual who raped Jane. Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News. 
Shot in the face in cold blood, today marks one year since a family began grieving their loved one and searching for answers in his murder. The Coast Guard veteran John Ryan Burton was found dead outside of his apartment, and to this day, there are no suspects in custody. Devin Clark tells us why his sister isn't giving up the fight for justice and closure. It's been a very, very rough year. Grief, confusion, and unrest are emotions that Megan Burton has become all too familiar with since the brutal murder of her brother, John Ryan Burton. I keep thinking I'm going to show up and see his truck, you know, out there to play golf with my dad or, you know, when we show up at Christmas. Exactly one year ago, the Coast Guard veteran was found shot to death outside of his apartment on the 7800 block of Woodchase Drive. His family believes someone or something drew him outside where he was shot in the face and died. The hardest part is that he didn't deserve this. He did nothing wrong to deserve this, you know, and he, he's, he's gone forever. Described as a homebody and hard worker, John Ryan Burton's life was cut short at 35 years old, but his sister says she'll continue searching for closure even if it takes the rest of her life. I think of the day when I can sit in court and look the person in the eye and let them know what they have taken from us. With that she has a message for the person who pulled the trigger. Whoever's watching and whoever did this, you know, I hope you don't sleep at night. I hope you think about what's going to happen to you, if not in this life, in the next. We reached out to the San Antonio Police Department to find out if there are any updates in this case. They have not gotten back to us. We do know that Crime Stoppers is offering a $5,000 reward for any information that can help close this case. The number 210-224-STOP. Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. We have new details in the death of a three year old boy today. New documents show that Logan Wayne Harville was arrested in connection with his death. He was arrested Monday at a Northwest Side apartment on a first degree felony charge of injury to a child. The victim is identified as Christian Paz, who also lived at that same apartment. The document states that Harville said he whipped the victim with a belt. The district attorney's office says that Harville's charge will likely not be upgraded to murder because the charge he already faces carries the same punishment. The police say they've caught a suspect they believe is behind a series of pawn shop robberies. Pearson Hanna is charged with aggravated robbery. Police think he's responsible for at least three robberies. The first happening in September of last year. That's when police say Hanna walked into a pawn shop on Ritterman Road, held up a pair of employees at gunpoint before taking off with cash and jewelry. Police say the same pawn shop was hit again in December, but this time the crook unknowingly took a dye pack. Officers say they tracked him down and found red dye and a piece of jewelry from the pawn shop inside his vehicle. Police say they also think Hannah could be behind a robbery at a pawn shop on Walsham Road. An update now to a story we first brought you yesterday on the News at 5 about a strong natural gas-like smell spanning much of Broadway north of downtown. While we are still waiting to hear whether CPS Energy cut natural gas service to customers whose boiler was leaking gas, we know the other cause of this stench. CPS Energy has blamed it on a sewage rehab project being handled by the San Antonio Water System, SAWS, which will likely take four months. We're still hoping to learn more about whether the smell will also last that long. And hopefully somebody will just take care of it, right? Mm. Time saver traffic right now, I-10 at Loop 1604. Always a traffic trouble spot. No different today. You can see very slow going. And as you look down at I-10, it actually looks like there may be a stalled vehicle down there as well. Again, this is I-10 at Loop 1604. Taking a look outside with live cam. Beautiful day out there. Nice sunset too, but cool. Uh, yeah, a lot cooler, uh, but nice under the bright sunshine today. Tomorrow, also going to be a cooler day, but we're swapping the sunshine for a lot of cloud cover and even some chances of light rain. We'll talk about all that coming up. Let's check on the aquifer. It's up one tenth of a foot since yesterday and in the pollen count. Mold and mountain cedar are both still high. We've also got ash in the mix today. It's low with just a count of 10 on this Wednesday. We'll take a look at your cloudy and cool Thursday forecast and even get you a sneak peek of what's ahead for the weekend coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Katie.
By the end of this week, there will be more than 900,000 Girl Scout cookies circulating or disappearing quickly throughout <laughs> San Antonio. Today was the first of four cookie distributions for the Girl, Girl Scouts of Southwest Texas. There's a new addition to the cookie lineup this year, the Lemon Up Cookie. They have inspirational messages on the top of each cookie. Organizers say the annual cookie sales are about more than just satisfying a sweet tooth. Everyone loves Girl Scout cookies. Um, it's a delicious product, but I think everyone really loves the purpose behind buying a box of Girl Scout cookies from a girl. Um, the Girl Scout cookie program is the world's largest girl-led business. Nationwide, it generates nearly a billion dollars in revenue for our program. The Girl Scouts of Southwest Texas serves more than 15,000 girls throughout 21 counties. You know, nobody asked me to buy cookies this year. What? I know. Maybe they think I don't need any. Well, I'm not sure. They're probably Sorry. right. They're probably <laughs> right. I don't need any. Just a reminder, the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive happening this Saturday. There's still plenty of time to get tickets to our KSAT Corral Hoedown. Each ticket comes with breakfast, seats for the parade, and a lot of other activities the entire family can enjoy. Again, the Cattle Drive Saturday, February 1st from 9 in the morning till 1 in the afternoon for tickets. Head on over to KSAT.com slash insider. And I know Myra and I... We'll be out there. We'll be there with our boots on.